Hey, this is Jürgen from Shining. You're watching Agorophobic News. Hey, hey, Milos here of Agorophobic News, this time with Mr. Jorgen of Shining. Hello, sir, how are you? Hey, hey, I'm good, thanks. So, it's good to be back here, right? Yes, we were here uh, a few uh, few years ago, yeah. played at Fabrica, and I saw some pictures of this festival, and I said to the, you know, my, my booking agent, uh, I really want to play on this festival. Uh, so, they, uh, so, we had a spot here in 2020. But it was cancelled, moved to 2021, cancelled again. Now we're here. We got all our shit, you know, we got all our gear. Everything's perfect now. Yeah, and are you guys working on a new album or do you maybe have something already finished? Uh, yeah, I mean, we are, uh, we have been releasing, you know, single songs the last uh, year. So, uh, they are going to be part of an album, but right now I don't really know when that's going to be. Uh, for today we're actually playing, yeah, we're playing some of that new stuff, of course, uh, but we are also playing a song from 2018 that we have never played before. So we're playing a song called Take Me, and it's one of our most popular ones, and it's kind of weird that we haven't played it before, but this is the first time. Yeah, wicked, yeah. And so, like, on your latest album, Animal, you had a lot of vocals when compared yeah. with other yeah. albums, so why was that change? Why did that change happen? Oh, uh, well, I wanted to do that. And that's it. <laughs> it's as easy as that. And are you happy with the response of the fans? Yeah. It, it took some time for some people to get used to us doing something new, but we've been doing new shit our whole career. We've been, we've been going from 1999. Yeah. Started with acoustic jazz music, and then some artsy rock stuff and then black jazz and then animal and then now some new stuff so they just gotta get used to bumpy ride that's that's what's fun yeah. you know yeah so like on your album in the kingdom of kitsch you will be a monster you had a different approach where you started mixing you know jazz with other genres of music like heavy metal or rock so why did you like decide to do that did you get bored of jazz only or what yeah that's what I did. I grew up with metal music when I was a kid, and then I studied jazz music for a long time, uh, 10, 15 years. Uh, and I just felt like, I felt like jazz music was music for a different generation, for an older generation than myself. It was from a different continent. It was from the US. Uh, you know, it was made by you know, Afri African Americans who is f was from another kind of like culture. A lot of cultures. I wanted to, I wanted to try to make something that was more my own stuff, more me. You know, so that's 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 the beginning of it. Yeah, yeah. And the next step was uh, black jazz, right? Yeah, we had like in the Kingdom of History will be monster, and we had Grindstone two years later, which was kind of the same. And then we black jazz came out in 2010. And that was, uh, that was, it kind of like something clicked. It was a clear direction and clear mix of uh, an energetic free jazz and, you know, hard metal. Yeah. And it was produced like with an industrial kind of production. Yeah. So that was something uh, unique. But, you know, to tell you the truth, a lot of people were pretty angry about that too. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, like looking back at it, you, you'd think people were happy about it, but they weren't. Like, the people who, you know, liked us as a jazz band, they were angry that we kind of left the jazz world. Yeah. And the people in the metal world, they were angry that fucking jazz people came into the metal world playing at Wacken and shit, you know? Yeah. So, we got shit reviews, people were angry, and now they just think it's just cool, so... I don't and know. You think it's a masterpiece, like 10, time, yeah. 10, 10 years later, all, all the hipsters love it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm glad that people like it, but it's about, it's about fucking time, right? Yeah, so you think it was like a bit of ahead of its time, maybe? I, I, I don't know. It was, I would say it's, it was, actually, it was, it was um, something unique, I would say. So ahead of I don't know ahead of or behind I don't know but it's it's it was different so people hadn't heard that stuff before and they've taken some people have taken 10 years to like it 
Oh, that's fine. Yeah. And so, what is like the meaning behind this black jazz? What did you th try to like convey with it? I wanted to com I wanted to combine uh, jazz and metal in my way. I wanted to combine the kind of jazz that I liked, that I played, and the kind of metal that I played. You know, there's a lot of different metal. Yeah. There's a lot of different jazz. So there's a few say, few parts of the of metal and few parts of jazz that yeah. I felt work really well together. You know, it's yeah. not technical metal. It's uh, it's got more of a more of an atmospheric vibe to it, and the same with uh, with uh, the jazz part that's involved. It's like more of the late 60s uh, free jazz kind of stuff that was is more spiritual and more uh, atmospheric. So those things work great together. While if I take in a completely different type of jazz and a completely different type of metal, I don't think it would work that well, you know? So it was, so that was the idea, and I think it worked really well. We were kind of lucky or whatever, like everything, all the planets kind of aligned. Uh, the, the music were good, we managed to work with a, with a producer that really put his fingerprint on it, Sean Bevan, who used to work with Manson and Nine Inch Nails. So he really, that record wouldn't have been as special without him. Yeah. So that was really cool. Uh, yeah, everything was a great drummer who approached that playing in a way that nobody else could have done. Yeah. That was really good. Awesome. And so on the album International Black Jazz Society, you have the first song, I think it's called Admittance, and there is like this crazy saxophone solo. Yeah. So is that the original composition or maybe some jazz standard? Because uh, it's, it was written kind of like a jazz, uh, jazz song. Like you got a melody and you got some chords and you, and uh, you know, some improvisation going on based on that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a thing I wrote, but it's, it's, Loosely based on the song, as by a guy called George George Gerzon from New York with his trio or quartet called the Fringe. They had a song that was kind of like a tribute to John Coltrane. And I like there's some melody parts that I stole from that. So, but yeah, so it, this is like how I would envision John Coltrane would play <laughs> if he had a metal band, you know? Yeah. Do you like Beaches Brew? Yeah. I do, but I think I've, I've listened more to John Coltrane than I have with uh, Miles Davis. So he's been more important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. And so, uh, what about 21st century Schizoid Man? Like, are you a big fan of uh, King Crimson? Yeah, I uh, had a period where I listened to it a lot, um, but not anymore. I did listen to it a lot. Uh, I kind of discovered it in, uh, let's say, 2000. And 2006 maybe so that was important but to be honest I don't listen to much from the 70s uh -huh. my where I start is the 80s kind yeah. of I listen to everything from after the 80s yeah. you know jazz fusion not much jazz fusion like uh, but I listen like you know yeah, I'm uh, I, like, I don't listen to much of the prog stuff except I actually do like I actually do prefer some of the newer King Crimson stuff, like from the 80s or whatever, yeah. like Red and that stuff. I think it's just a little bit more uh, modern. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I uh, when it comes to Metallica's uh, catalog, I like Black uh, Black Album and uh, yeah, and yeah. and beyond. So so that's like I'm I'm on that side. I don't listen much to Black Sabbath, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And do you like Norwegian Virus and Arcturus? I, to be honest, I haven't listened much to them, so I, I wouldn't really want to yeah. comment on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, if you had to single out some uh, metal and non-metal influences, what would you mention? Uh, when I was a kid, I listened to Entombed, Sepultura, and Pantera. Those were my biggest uh, bands. Death, also. Death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, when it comes to jazz, it's mostly John Coltrane, a little bit of Miles Davis. A little bit of uh, Michael Brecker, um, and then the, I listen to a lot of contemporary classical music like uh, Olivier and Messia, uh, Gustav Mahler, Schoenberg. Those were kind of like my three main ones, yeah. and then pop music. And like now I listen to everything that's on the top, whatever 
40, you know, top 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You had the collaboration with Marty Friedman, with Amorphis, with Isan, so, but if you had to single out one of your collaborations, which would that be? Which you're the most proud of? Uh, I think after with Ishan, which is because it's the first, it's the first of, uh, at least the first that I can remember, where I did like my kind of, you know, at that period of time I landed on the way of playing the sax with metal music. And I've done that since then. But before that I tried all sorts of different ways, you know. So that was the first that I did for another artist. I did that on Black Jazz and I did that on Ishan's album and they came out on the same day in Europe. So it was a big a big day for me, you know, for that kind of thing. I felt like Black Jazz was the industrial modern version of Black Jazz and then Ishan's after was the more uh, organic version of the same concept. Yeah. So I think that's an important that's an important one for me. Yeah, and do you have some last uh, you know words for this interview? No, I'm super happy that we're here uh, to play. You know, this is the first first kind of like open air summer festival we're doing with Shining since the pandemic. Yeah. We've done some small festivals indoors, but this is feels like you know back in the old days when we Yes. You know? So I like it. I I, I love it. Okay, so thank you so much for your time and uh, see you at the show. See ya! Hey people, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Agoraphobic News. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us grow. You can also support us on Patreon by becoming one of our patrons. And big shout out to our patron Season of Mist for supporting our work. So stay tuned for another interview and keep it metal!